Okay, so last time we were talking about standard deviation and really all we did was calculate that, calculate some variance and talk about the, the relationship between the two of them. Today, we're going to talk about some of the properties of standard deviation to, to start us off. Uh, and like I said, we'll get into coefficient to answer your question, Karina, in a little bit. Coefficient of variation. So, what we learned last time is that standard deviation shows how spread apart the data really is. So a large standard deviation would say that your data is relatively spread out. Does that make sense? So the average distance from the mean is great. Uh, so the greater the distance from the mean, the greater the standard deviation saying my, my data is more spread out than, um, than close together. So it's all scattered. So a couple things. Close data will have a small standard deviation. Spread apart data will have a large standard deviation. Closely grouped data, it's going to have a small standard deviation, signifying that. And then spread out data, data that's not closely grouped, it's like everywhere, all over the place, like the 1, 3, 14 that we had from the bank lines, that's going to have a larger standard deviation. Since we kind of understood the concept of standard deviation from last time, I hope that this makes sense to you. The standard deviation obviously calculated the, the average distance from the mean. If the distance from the average is way, way big, then you're going to have a way, way big standard deviation. If the distance from the mean is small, that means all the data is grouped around the center, right? Where most things happen. If it's all grouped around there, the standard deviation is really small. It's, it's right in the center, right near the mean. If we have way different things, then we have a large standard deviation. Not your head if you're okay with that. Okay. How much you wait today? All right, cool. So that's that's a couple properties about standard deviation that were kind of maybe obvious to you from last time. There is one other thing that we can use uh, the standard deviation standard deviation to do, and that's using it in conjunction with what's called the empirical rule. Now, I do have to mention. Do you, have we talked about normal in here? Normal. A normal data distribution has no skew to it. There's no outliers left or right. It, Climbs up to the average, and then it goes back down. It's a very nice bell-shaped curve. That's what we call normal. If the data fits that basic shape, uh, we call that a normal distribution. Empirical rule only works with the normal distribution. It won't work with a skew data set. So if our data set is normally distributed, we can use what's called the empirical rule. It's kind of a rule of thumb. Uh, it's an approximation but it's based on some math that I, I have to teach you later on in chapter six. So we're kind of jumping ahead just a little bit as far as the, the rule of thumb goes. Um, but I will go back when we get to chapter six and explain how all these things were, were achieved. You okay with that? Okay, so for right now, if a data set is normally distributed, we can use what's called the empirical rule. Okay, what's the empirical rule say? It's a, it's a rule that says how much proportion or percentage of a data set will fall within certain standard deviations of the mean. Some people call it the 68, um, 95, 99.7 rule. Um, 
because of this. So here's what the empirical rule says. It says if your data is normally distributed, this happens all the time. This is really quite interesting that this does happen. No matter the data set, if it's normally distributed, this is going to work. It's kind of crazy. But it says these three things. Approximately, if you have a normal distribution of data, 68% of the data Sixty-eight percent of the data will fall within one standard deviation of the mean. Now that might not make a whole lot of sense. You're like, wait a second, that's not, that's not really. What, what's that even mean? Here's what it means. Okay. You all know how to calculate standard deviation now, right? Right. Right. Okay. Good. I hope so. And so, if I took the standard deviation of the heights, like heights of people, it's going to be, I don't know, maybe three inches or something like that you'd be able to calculate that standard deviation. Are you with me on that? You'd also be able to calculate an average for any group. True? If you take a random sample of people, the heights are generally normally distributed. They have an average, there's people above that average and people below that average. No one's in your sample, well, rarely are you getting someone in your sample that's like seven feet tall. Rarely, right? Unless you're taking a sample like NBA players, but that doesn't really happen here, right? We don't have NBA players in our class. So if we took a random sample, our heights are going to be normally distributed. We're going to have a sample mean. We'll also have a standard deviation. Okie dokie with that. If our, if our sample distribution is normally distributed, if our sample data is normally distributed, what it says is if you have the mean and I take one standard deviation, which is three inches in our case, and I'm making up off the top of my head right now, but let's say it is, I take three inches and add it and subtract it from the mean. Are you with me on this? So I'm getting a standard deviation above and a standard deviation below the average, 68% of you are going to fall in that range. That's what it says. It says 68% of your sample will fall within that range. Now you understand the idea here? That's what the empirical rule says. It says, number one, 68% of the data will fall within one standard deviation of the mean. Well, the next question is, okay, if 68% falls in one standard deviation, what percentage falls within two standard deviations? That's the next little percentage. I said there's 68. The next one, do you remember from me saying it just a little while ago? It's in the 90s. It's like 95. 95%. 95%. Mm -hmm. So within two standard deviations, you're going to get 95% of your data. That's a lot of, that's a lot of the people. So 68 for the first... 95% of your data will fall within two standard deviations. Lastly, if we go out to three standard deviations from the mean, that's, remember, with, uh, fall within standard deviations means you're going from the mean to the right and to the left. That's the segment we're talking about. So two standard deviations would mean to the right twice or two times, and to the left twice or two times that number. Two, three standard deviations means one, two. So three times out there and three times out that way. So between these two numbers, you would have six standard deviations. Okay, that's, that's three within the mean, all right? If you did that, you're going to get 99.7% of the data. Is that everybody? Is that everybody? Is that a lot? Yes. Mathematically, let's say you were talking about huge samples or a huge population, mathematically, is it ever possible to cover everybody if you keep going out? Here's 68%, then we have 95%, then 99.7%. Is it ever going to be 100%? Practically, maybe. Because in this classroom, there's no one over a certain height, right? But 
Theory-wise, no. It's a never-ending bell-shaped curve. So you keep going out and going out. It's just the rareness of finding that person increases. Um, here's what this, this says to us. Is it likely that we're going to find a piece of data that's outside three standard deviations from the mean? Is it likely? If 99.7% of the data, 99.7, that means out of 100 people, out of, let's see, uh, out of 1,000 people, only three of them aren't in there. Okay. So, if 99.7% of the people are within a certain range, is it likely by randomly picking someone, they're going to be outside of that range? Is that going to happen often? Or are most of them going to be within the range? Clearly, yeah. 99.7% of the people are going to be within there. That's the vast, vast majority. In fact, within two standard deviations, you get how what percentage? That's pretty likely that you're not going to find someone outside that range. Fairly likely, right? Not, not too, too common. 95% out of every 100 people, 95 are going to be within there. Pretty likely that if you draw names out of a hat, you're going to find someone in that range. Isn't that true? Yeah, okay. That means this is, gives us a rule of thumb what's usual and what's not usual. If we have something that's w within two standard deviations of the mean, 95%, we're going to call that piece of data a usual piece of data. If it's outside of two standard deviations, for right now we call that unusual. Does that make sense to you? So pieces of data falling within two standard deviations of our mean are considered normal. Yeah, that, that happens. That's usual. Outside of that, we're going to consider it unusual. So when you're asked on your homework, is this piece of data normal or usual? I'm sorry, usual? Is this piece of data usual or unusual? You're going to go, well, let me think. Um, is it more than two standard deviations away from the mean? If it is, then it's unusual. If it's within that two standard deviations, then it would be considered usual. We'll do an example in just a minute to kind of illustrate this also. I won't just do all the theory at you. So if a piece of data is within two standard deviations of the mean, we call that usual. Or a better way to say it is a data value, not a piece of data. Let me go read it now. Because a piece of data, you know, you start talking about Star Trek again, data's the Android guy, a piece of data, it's kind of strange, so data value. So if a data value is within two standard deviations from the mean, that's considered a usual value for right now. Outside of the two standard deviations, it would be unusual. Can, again, can we ever cover 100% of our data if we just keep going out standard deviations? Practically, for a certain data set, yes, we can. But in theory, no, no, you really can't. Because if you consider the entire population, there might always be the chance that you're going to get something higher. Okay. Always might be the chance, or lower, than, than what you could imagine. Haven't you ever seen those pictures of those guys? I mean, we're talking about height. With height, height, we all understand that, so I'm using that example, but uh, you generally don't get people who are 12 feet tall, right? Have you ever seen someone who's 12 feet tall? You ever heard of anybody who's 12 feet tall? Me neither. I've heard of 8 feet, though.